you you believe that they're aware of this that they they can't survive past 2050 2070 right. whatever it is i think that's what's been driving them because 2022 was the last year where they had a sufficient number of people in their 20s to even attempt this so from my point of view not only did the war always have to happen it always had to happen by now now is this just because of the nature of a dictatorship that's run by someone like Putin, that it's just completely mismanaged because he's just dominated the power structure and made sure that everybody f falls in line with his ideology and his reign. Like, what, what caused all this to be so poorly managed? Well, Russia has always been poorly managed and authoritarian. But under Putin, it's taken a much darker turn uh, because of the nature of the end of the Cold War. Uh, if you remember back to 1982, there was a coup in the Soviet Union. And Chernomyrdin and Andropov and Gorbachev were FSB, well, then KGB agents, who basically overthrew the old system of Brezhnev and took over. And try, Because they were the only ones who really had a full understanding of what was going on. They controlled the information. Uh, they were not able to save the system, and so it broke. And Putin is the successor to that legacy, because he was also in the KGB. And we're now in an environment that between the terminal demographic structure of the Soviet-slash-Russian system and Putin's personal paranoia, so he's gone through and purged what was left of the KGB, FSB, of anyone who has personal ambitions to succeed him, we're left with an entire political elite of only about 130 people. And Putin has removed anyone who has leadership ambitions. Oh, geez. Now, they all see the world the same way. They all kind of agree with Putin on what's at stake here. Uh, but it does mean that when this generation is gone, this is it. This is all the leadership talent that the country has. So because of his sort of top-down approach, he's eliminated all the possibility of future leaders in yeah. some way. Even if Russia did have a replacement generation coming up, and it doesn't, he's taken steps to make sure that they can't challenge him. And so any sort of leadership talent has left or been killed. What did they hope happens? And what, how, I mean, when, when everything's going so poorly, like what do we know about how they're assessing things? Well, they're obviously not thrilled with the way the things are. Uh, they're using one bit of propaganda after another to justify it, saying that, you know, we're fighting all of NATO or like, you know, demons are involved. That was my personal favorite. Demons? Oh, yeah. You know, when it came to the Kyrgyzstan offensive and it became clear that there was more going on than just NATO weapons, the Ukrainians actually knew what they were doing. Uh, they changed the, the line from that these are all Nazis to these are actually gay demons. Uh, gay? Gay demons, yes. What? Yeah, Russian propaganda is a hoot. Please explain the gay demons. Oh, I don't know if I can explain it. I'm just saying that this is the official <laughs> line right now. So we have but demons fighting us in Ukraine. But why, why gay demons? Like, what is, uh, well, is there a mythology to that? <laughs> not really. Uh, the guy who's in charge of the Orthodox Church is a Putin crony. Uh, Kirill is his name. Um, he's kind of like the Eastern Orthodox Pope, if you will. And he has been a partner with organized crime and with Putin since the beginning. And so he is coming up with ever more creative approaches to the propaganda. And so this is a way of, ooh, how can I say this without pissing off half of the people listening? Imagine Trump using his influence with evangel evangelical Christians to come up with a theological reason why something didn't go his way. It's kind of the equivalent of that. And so mm. gay demons is what he came up with. Gay demons. Yes. And they ran with it. So that's on state propaganda now. Really? Yeah. It's Wow. Uh, and what's the epicenter of the gay demons? Oh, Kiev, obviously. Kiev. Yeah. So we've got a Jewish Nazi gay demon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And truth is always weirder than fiction. And the scary rumor is that Putin has cancer. And that uh, or Parkinson's is one I've heard as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. He's clearly on steroids, but you know that could mean a whole lot of things, like prednisone or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. And you, you say that because of his appearance? Yeah, he he looks very not just flushed but puffy. Yeah, and that's that's kind of a classic. Too many steroids in your system 
issue. And this uh, puffiness is uh, this this these steroids are to battle this cancer somehow. In theory, uh, you know, steroids keep you going in a time when you should probably be laying down. Is really the kind of the bottom line. Uh, whether he's medicated, over medicated, or medicated because of medical zone reasons, we really don't know. He's not in great health. That is obvious. And for someone who has been the uh, the shirtless horseback rider in the propaganda videos, that's a real problem. He's visibly wearing. Uh, bulletproof or bullet resistant vests, even around his own propaganda people. Uh, there was this great piece that came out that I saw last week where it was all the propaganda shots that he's taken with like with the soldiers' mothers and on the front and with the tech people and in the intelligence. And it was like the same 12 people were in every single shot, just in different outfits. Mm. Uh, and even with those people, he's wearing his ballistic vest. Now, when you say, uh, when you talk about his appearance, he's clearly unhealthy. Is, is there, uh, can you demonstrate that? Are there images that show him a couple of years ago versus now mm -hmm. where you could see his appearance? Yeah, it's, it's not much of a reach. Like I said, he, he likes to pose for, uh, shirtless on horseback to show how virile he is. He didn't look good on shirtless on horseback. Yeah, I know. You, you gotta look at it from the Russian point of view. I mean, the, the standards are a little different. Are they? Oh, yeah. Uh, and he's got the shakes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the Parkinson, Parkinson's uh, analysis, I guess, has come out. I've never seen any of this. Yeah, it's so there's a video of him yeah. shaking. Mm -hmm. See if you can find any of that, Jim. See if you can find a comparison. Of uh, health. Yeah, I got an article on like a timeline of his health. Okay. Here's the shakes part. Let's Go. See. Yeah, and he's a three-minute video. So he used to be a video. fairly animated speaker. Boy, he does look puffy. Yeah. Now, whether or not he's actually sick or not, I have no idea. Um, could it just be that he's just drinking a lot? Technically, he says he's a teetotaler, which really, which is pretty rare in Russian society. But you know, he's still alive, and a lot, a lot of Russians make it to his age. How old is he now? Mid sixties. And so it's just an appearance thing. We don't have any like real hard data no, that he's sick. No, we do, well, the, the folks in the intelligence world who are listening to his phone calls and reading his email might, but that has not made, been made public, to my knowledge, from the American side. So Ukrainian military intelligence chief claims Putin is very sick and a coup is underway. Yeah, but Donov has been saying that there's a coup underway since March. So I, he's kind of the Ukrainian propaganda guy. I wouldn't put too much... And how would Friends that, but what would even happen there? Well, if like a coup did take see, place. Putin has so thoroughly purged that what's left of the intelligentsia, there's only 130 of them, and there's probably only one of them who would have the guts to throw a coup. That's um, the Rosneft CEO. Rosneft is their oil monopoly. Uh, Igor Sechin is his name. He used to be a gun runner during the Soviet period. He's got the guts to pull it off. But if there's anything that the other 129 agrees that Sechin's a and he should be shot on sight if he kills 